What's up everybody, Charlie Marlowe here. Want to jump into this debate about NASCAR and losing fans from the 1990s that never came back. So basically, Kyle Busch brought this up last weekend and a lot of people are talking about it. You have the diehard fans of NASCAR of the Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, Mark Martin, um, Harry Gant, you name it. Guys from the 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, all of that. And our world now today of the 2024 is a lot different fan base of following along. We, I don't feel like we were able to transition a lot of the fans that were fans of those drivers of the names that I just mentioned into a William Byron fan or into a Kyle fan or into whoever, you know, they kind of probably went away. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. And growing up in Toledo, Ohio, where I did, and I wasn't a NASCAR fan. I think I can speak to to why NASCAR lost a lot of the casual fans. So growing up, my birthday's May 28th, so to me, racing was always Indy 500, right? I'd heard of the Andretti's and Fittipaldi's and AJ Foyt and all that. Didn't know hardly anything about NASCAR. But I do remember early 90s, and we were into baseball cards. My dad collected some stuff. I remember the Richard Petty collectible pop bottles or soda, whatever you call it, glass bottles. I think it was Pepsi, could be Coke, I'm not sure. But I remember the King, they had the collectible bottles, however many it was. And I'd heard of Dale Earnhardt in the 90s. I'd heard of Rusty Wallace. And uh, Jeff Gordon comes on the scene and he had the, the Rainbow Warrior car and he was young. And then he had the Pepsi commercials as well and i think i think this is nascar's big problem now is the marketability back then of those guys they were able to attract the casual fans and you can you can basically talk about dale jr then where look this is probably more late 90s early 2000s but dale dale Earnhardt jr i remember from mtv cribs and and budweiser and Dale Earnhardt Jr. doing commercials as well. And that's where I I don't think NASCAR nowadays, they don't have any drivers. I don't wanna say that don't have that marketability, but the sponsors aren't doing it and the guys aren't out there. Now, I think they have really good personalities. I, I've said all the time, Denny Hamlin, like him or not, is a great personality. And even if he's the villain, he is a great personality. He's funny. He's interesting. Kyle Busch also, who obviously used to be the villain. I feel like now he's the good guy. Great personality. Funny. Every time he does a media availability, there's something funny in there. There's something interesting. But if you go from basically all those iconic drivers that I mentioned, and then go through kind of the 2000s, to me... There wasn't anybody that that really grabbed you besides Dale Earnhardt Jr. Even even Jimmy Johnson, seven-time champion. And I worked in sports my whole life. I worked in sports for 20 years. I'm trying to think, if I didn't work in sports, would I have known of Jimmy Johnson? And and I'm just saying, look, his, his profile, his Q rating, was not that of Jeff Gordon who was his teammate who had the four championships but wasn't as successful. To me, Jeff Gordon, it was about, look, he was in the Nelly song, remember? Jeff Gordon with the, was it White SS with the Navigation? And I think, look, you might laugh at that, but stuff like that matters. And being in commercials and being in songs and all that, and that's why those guys, the Earnhardts, the Petties, Rusty Wallace, There was more of a folksy nature back then. Those guys were heroes. They were icons. And so let's think again about that Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson era. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he was the guy, even though he never won a championship. But like Carl Edwards to me was always really interesting. And what's a big part of that though? The flip. Carl Edwards could bring in the casual fan. That's, you might say it doesn't matter. Stuff like that matters. Look, I live in St. Louis, Missouri. A big reason people know Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith was a great baseball player, great shortstop, great defensive player. But that flip, that flip is memorable. When Carl would win a race, he would do the flip. It also didn't hurt. Wasn't wasn't he on the cover of Men's Health or something like that? One of those magazines with his shirt off. Stuff like that attracts 
casual fans. And for that one, probably a, a bunch of women that weren't maybe into the sport. So that 2000s era to me, and this is why I think Kyle Busch is, is spot on. You had all those iconic drivers that kind of all retired around the same time. And then you had that era of, of Tony Stewart was obviously really good and, and really popular, but still he didn't, he didn't have the same, the same uh, kind of flair of the guys like the Earnhardts and the, and the Jeff Gordons of the world. And then, so the drivers now, look, Joey Logano is a great driver, but I, I, don't, I don't think Joey Logano and um, guys these days, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, they just, they don't, they don't seem to have the same type of iconic stature as those guys from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. What do you think? Even though, look, Logano, Kyle Busch, uh, Kyle Larson, you can make the case that those guys are just as good or better than a lot of the other names that I mentioned. But I'm just talking about from a from a marketing standpoint, they don't have the same juice. And I think about this sometimes when we post our videos with Kenny. And to me, it's about you got to be funny, you got to be a storyteller, you got to be interesting. You know, we did some interviews with with Ryan Blaney and William Byron, two of the biggest names in the sport young guys, up and coming guys, and those interviews didn't really do well. Um, and, and there's nothing, nothing against those guys, but I just feel like people don't, don't know them. They don't have those great stories. They, they need to let their personalities come out even more. And they're trying, by the way. Like, I think those guys do have good personalities. What do you guys think? Do you think the sponsors, are the sponsors not doing the same things they used to do? in the 80s and the 90s with the activations to get people, whether it's commercials, whether it's uh, you know those pop-ups at stores where you'd see the driver. We've heard folks like Bobby Labonte talk about that where back in the day you would see these drivers in the grocery store in terms of there'd be a big cardboard cutout next to their product or their sponsor and all that. I feel like we don't see that um, as much anymore. To me, the guy, who, who could be the guy that brings it back. So again, Hamlin's great, Kyle Busch is great, but the key, you can make the argument, the key to NASCAR the last couple years of being really interesting is Ross Chastain. And being the watermelon man, you got the good nickname, and, and smashing the watermelons, again, it's one of those viral type moments, just like Carl Edwards with the flip, that people remember. And I don't know how you guys think, but last year, the whole season turned and it got less interesting when Rick Hendrick called out Ross Chastain for wrecking his cars. If you remember, now I'm not saying it's necessarily good on the track, but it was freaking interesting when he was wrecking Kyle Larson and he's wrecking the Hendrick cars and he's getting in a fight and punching Noah Gregson. And then ever since Rick Hendrick called him out, you saw to me a watered down version of Ross Chastain and the season wasn't as interesting until right at the end when, look, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ryan Blaney in the championship race, didn't basically let him pass him, and it was interesting again. So, so to me, if Ross Chastain is in the mix, this version of NASCAR is a lot more interesting. But I do think for these drivers to, to be anywhere close to the Earnhardts and Petties and, and Mark Martins and Rusty Wallace's, of, of back in the day. And I don't, I don't think they ever really can be either. It's a different, it's a different era of media and all that, but they got to get out there. They got to be interesting on social media. They got to do commercials. That's why I think this Netflix thing was huge. And I watched a couple episodes of that. They need to do more of that. They need to do that basically every single year. And I think, you know, have that different guys, different episodes and feature the different drivers. So I, I think, I think that's going to bring people back as well. But what do you guys think? Are you agreeing with Kyle Busch? Are you agreeing with anything that I said? I just feel like the drivers nowadays, they just don't, they, they can't grab the casual fan like they could in the 90s. To me, if, if, I, if I didn't work basically where I'm covering NASCAR and, and watching NASCAR every week, every day, I don't know if I would know of any of these drivers. So I always like to look at it like this. I think a good gauge 
is is to kind of ask your mom. I always say like, if your mom who's not a sports fan has has heard of these people, right? Then then the sport is doing something to market them properly. Like my mom would know of Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. Back in the day, she had probably heard of Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon. My mom has probably never heard of any NASCAR driver right now, currently. And you know, she's 70 years old, but again, it's about attracting the casual fan. But Kyle Busch was talking about those diehard fans in the 90s and some of them not coming back. So look, if you're losing the casual fan, that's one thing. If you're losing the diehard fans from the 90s, that's a real, real problem. So, all right, a little bit of a rant, a little bit of a discussion there. What, what do you think of what I said? Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Reply in the comments. Uh, what do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Where am I wrong? Where am I right? Uh, what do you think? Again, I'm a 90s kid. Grew up in the 90s. All those iconic drivers. The color schemes. Oh, here's another thing. As I'm about to wrap up, I forgot to mention Look, I'm, I'm clearly not the first person to say this, but another big problem nowadays is obviously the changing of the cars in terms of the color schemes, the wrap schemes, the paint jobs, whatever you want to call it. Just being able to watch a race real quick and look and see who that is. Oh, that's Dale Earnhardt. That's Midnight Rusty Wallace. Oh, that's Mark Martin. There's the 43 orange and blue Richard Petty. Nowadays, the fact that a lot of these cars, you have to go, who is that? Oh. Oh, what's his sponsor? You'll have four or five, six different cars. And I think that's also a big problem. Just growing up and seeing Jeff Gordon, Rainbow Warrior, the Black Intimidator, number three, Richard Petty with the blue and the orange, Jimmy Johnson even with the lows, the Tony Stewart Home Depot car. Nowadays, I feel like for a while you had the FedEx with, with Denny Hamlin, and now you're not even seeing that as much. You're seeing the Mavis and... Uh, what was his car the other day when he won? Was it uh, an oil change? I, see, that's the thing. I don't, I don't even remember. You know, Chase Elliott with the Napa is usually one that you can point out. Most races, Joey Logano with the, uh, you know, the, the Penske, the yellow, the Pennzoil. So that's, that's another big problem, I think, is, is not being able to, to know what the car is and, and kind of have the shirts and all that and have the posters where back in the day you knew exactly the color scheme of your guys. All right, I rambled on. Let me know what you think. Comment, like, subscribe. Appreciate it, guys. See you later. Let me know what you think.